daily temperature reading. So we get to the very first tool of Paris, the daily temperature reading. What it teaches participants is how to confide, how to keep each other informed, how to not become strangers with the person uh, next to them. So many times in our lives, we may get busy. We're working, uh, we, we have to pick up the kids, we have to go to work, we have to take care of the mom, whatever that looks like. Um, and what the daily temperature reading does is keep us informed with each other and make sure we're not sailing ships passing by. So that's the first tool and it's exactly that. What we say is to try to do it daily. And we're going to go into it now. Um, but what we, our goal, what we hope for is that this becomes something like unconscious incompetence where we're naturally doing that regularly. So as we go into it, I want to invite everybody to think of your relationship as a garden. Have you ever tried to grow anything? Uh, have you ever tried to grow anything in specific? And I can ask people to let, let us know a little bit about that. How did it go for them? What did they learn? In essence, when you try to grow, when you're about to start growing something, whether it's a garden, whether it's a fruit, whether it's a vegetable, whatever that might look like, we have to know a few things and we have to get a few things right. All right, we have to know what kind of soil does this specific garden that I'm trying to grow need? How much water? How much attention? Do I have the right tools? So that's what we invite people to do within their relationships. Start figuring out, okay, what does this specific relationship to grow with this person look like? What does it need? So you're going to see the first picture. It's a cactus. Right? So we're just trying to figure out what kind of garden are, are we creating. Are a beautiful cacti garden demands very little water, maybe you know, even less attention, um, and demands different kind of soil, different amount of sunlight. Um, then, if we were to grow a garden like a rose garden, right? And it's not that one is better than the other one, or one's good or one's bad. They're different gardens. Some people need more attention than others. Uh, you don't want to give something too much attention that it's going to, you know, hurt the soil or hurt their growth. You don't want to give some, a specific garden too little attention that would hurt their growth. So we start thinking about how do we nurture this garden? How do we water this garden? <clears throat> how exactly does this garden need to grow and what do I need to do for it. Um, so we think of the daily temperature reading as in just taking care of the garden regularly. Um, making sure that we're not missing several days of it, several weeks of it, or much worse, several months, which are things that happen sometimes. So this is a tool that was created by Virginia Satir 40 some years ago and has been taught to thousands upon thousands of people. It is the one tool that people have hands down come back saying how it has just changed their life. It has improved their relationships. It keeps people informed. So I'm gonna go through the five different steps of this. If you see on this slide, the first is appreciation. So these are the steps of them. Appreciations is just telling your partner those specific things that you appreciate about him or her. Um, telling them something very specific. When I mean that, I don't mean, you know, I like your red hair. I mean, thank you so much for bringing me that coffee the other morning. Thank you so much for stepping in when you saw that I didn't know how to respond. Thank you so much for cooking. Thank you so much for bringing over some of those groceries the other day. 
thank you so much for you know, bringing me roses when you saw me being down. Thank you so much for making the bed. Whatever small things, small specific things or big specific things you see, you're letting them know that you appreciate it. You're watering that garden. Those are things that you like and you're letting them know you like it. So you're putting it in their hands to be able to do it again if they'd like or not, but you're letting them know that you appreciated it. It's a great difference to start a conversation with, why didn't you take out the trash? Or thanks so much for, you know, taking care of all your schoolwork, but I am wondering about the trash. But we're starting things with appreciation. So you'll see what's really important about the daily temperature reading is that it always starts with appreciations. The next step is new information. So both you and your partner or whoever you're doing this with sort of think about delve into your yourselves and think about what new information can you share with your partner. Uh, was there a phone call that came in today? Uh, did you just hear about a promotion? Did you just hear about a possible vacation? Um, did you know did you get contacted by a school that you wanted to go to? Um, did the neighbor pass by to say hello? Whatever new information is going on in your life, but you're sharing it, you're keeping each other informed. The next one is puzzles. This is just asking your partner about anything that puzzled you. It can be from, hey, I saw when you were talking on the phone, you got a little bit upset. I wondered what that was about. I can, it can be a puzzle like I don't know how the phone works. I'm still trying to figure out how to use this application. Um, it could be a puzzle with, it looks like, you know, it looks like you've been tired lately. I wonder what that's about. But it's really about not necessarily getting the answer because you might not get the answer in this forum. Um, what it's more important, what the more important aspect is that we are asking the questions that we wonder about and we feel safe to ask those questions. So many times we go to our, our parents, our best friends, our barber, whoever, our coworker and say, hey, you know, my, my partner seems to be sleeping a lot. I wonder what that's about. Or we say, you know, I wonder what's going on with this. I, this keeps happening. We go to everybody in the, all over the, the community or in our lives and ask them, except we're not asking the one person that would have the answer for us. Um, so again, it's not necessarily that we have that answered during this um, daily temperature reading, though they might answer it for you. Um, but it's more than anything being able and comfortable and creating a habit of being able to bring up those things that you question. The next one is concerns with recommendations. So in essence, you're bringing up a complaint and you're bringing up something that you're concerned about, but you have a request. So it's not just a blanket complaint you're saying, Actually, I'm going to show you the next slide because this is what's really important when you're confiding a concern. It's very, very specific. You're going to focus on one specific behavior and please feel free to ask somebody um, in, in your participant audience to go ahead and read this. A behavior is not a thought or a feeling. A behavior is the way a person acts. So we start with when you leave the dishes in the sink overnight. I feel you don't respect the household. What I recommend instead is at least putting them in the dishwasher. Whatever that recommendation is, that's up to you. Um, but what we're being very, very specific about is the behavior. So we're not saying when you 
are rude to me, right? If we ask a room of a hundred people, what does rude to me mean, that you're going to get a hundred different answers. Uh, when you were untidy, same thing. We're saying something specific. If there's socks on the floor, then there's socks on the floor. If there's shoes outside of the closet, then it's shoes outside of the closet. If it's screaming at the children, then it's screaming at the children. Whatever it is specifically, you want to make sure um, that you're addressing it. If it's being late to the meeting, it's being late to the meeting. And then we're going forward to say, I feel. So it's very much I talk instead of, you know, you, you made me feel this way or you are always doing things this way. It's saying when you, and very specifically the behavior, so it's a true fact statement, not exaggerating or anything, um, and how it makes you feel and what your request is. For this exercise, when we do it for the first time in a classroom um, of participants, we do skip the concerns with recommendations and we go straight to wishes, hopes, and dreams. The daily temperature reading always ends in wishes, hopes, and dreams. That's very, very important. Even if sometimes somebody can go home and do this with their family and they might not have new information, especially if they're doing it every day. They might not have puzzles, especially if they're doing it every day. Um, but it's really important that we're always ending uh, with wishes, hopes, and dreams, as well as starting with appreciations. Um, wishes, hopes, and dreams keeps us updated. What are our new hopes? What are our wishes? As we go from year to year with our partner, things change. It's really important that, you know, they know now you're starting to think about traveling or having a family or owning a house so that we're not going in two different directions, but we're keeping each other informed. So we get all the partners um, or singles to partner up, whatever that looks like, to go ahead and face the, another person in a leveling position. Um, and that they're going to do their own daily temperature reading. But first, we are going to ask for a volunteer couple. We're going to ask them to come up and get in the leveling position. And as we coach the modeling couple how to do the daily temperature reading in front of everybody before everybody else does the exercise, we also want to make sure that we're always sitting down next to them. Realize they're going to be sitting. So if you as an instructor are standing and speaking over them, we're already not leveling with the people in front of us. So we want to make sure we're pulling up a chair. We're even kneeling. We're doing whatever it is that we need to do to come down to a leveling position while we're working with our um, participants or with our modeling couples. So we would guide them through appreciations, new information, puzzles, concerns with recommendations, and wishes, hopes, and dreams. Once they're done with that, they do give a sign of appreciation. Sometimes it's a hug, sometimes it's just a thank you, sometimes it's a shaking of a hand, whatever people feel comfortable with. And then you make sure to say everybody can get started. What's really important is that you're playing that music. You're giving them that privacy, their soft music playing in the background, and you let them know that they're going to have some time to do this. If you need to walk around the room, depending how big it is to assist, please feel free. Um, the wallet cards needed to be passed out. Everybody has them. And you're assisting people as you go around. Okay, give them plenty of time. And this could be, you know, 10 to 15 minutes each person. So. This will be about half hour time where you play music and just help people stay in uh, the process. One very important thing for daily temperature reading as your participants are doing it is to let them know, one, as we're just learning how to be present for our partners and we're just learning about keeping each other updated, um, we're not to use any dynamite issues and as we go through this to make sure you know our puzzles or anything like that 
isn't anything attacking the other person or could be taken as attacking the other person or is about the other person ideally. Right now it's just learning how to turn the pedals, learning how to ride the bike. So we take this softly and everybody enjoy.